Driving a bus is a tremendous responsibility. After all, today's school children will become the adults of tomorrow. Likewise, transit bus passengers are the people who keep our nation going right now. So in a very real sense, you hold today and tomorrow in your hands. And as if that wasn't pressure enough, everything around you often seems like it's trying to draw your attention away from the road. And that's when you start taking things for granted. Don't let this happen to you, because the minute you stop concentrating on the job at hand, Making a safe left-hand turn is more complicated than you may realize. You have to consider the length of the bus, its weight, other vehicles on the road, the number of roads emptying into the intersection, pedestrians, stoplights, signs, curbs, and the list goes on and on. What can go wrong? Plenty. You could have a head-on collision with an oncoming vehicle. You could be T-boned or rear-ended by a vehicle coming from the right. You could be T-boned by a vehicle coming from the left. If you make too wide a turn, you could hit parked vehicles, bus stands, utility poles, etc. on the street you're turning onto. If you make too shallow a turn, you could have a head-on collision with an oncoming vehicle on the street you're turning onto. If you misjudge your bus's tail swing, you could swing out and sideswipe a vehicle in the right-hand lane. Or you could hit a person or vehicle hidden by one of your bus's blind spots. And what if you're driving a transit bus or a paratransit bus or a conventional school bus? Each bus turns a little bit differently. However, the principles we discuss here apply to all types of buses. So as you can see, left-hand turns expose laid laws drivers and passengers to a number of potential dangers. Now, this program was designed to make you aware of these dangers and to show you what you can do to avoid them. First, we'll look at potential danger factors that relate directly to your bus, such as turning points, blind spots, and tail swing. Then we'll talk about the considerations that go on around you, such as pedestrians, stoplights, oncoming vehicles, etc. We'll show you what to look for what to guard against, and how to make a left-hand turn safely. It's a good idea to take notes. At the end of the program, we'll review three left-hand turn accidents. Your meeting facilitator will stop the tape after each accident so that you can discuss what could have been done to prevent it. Safety doesn't just happen. It takes preparation and concentration. And preparation for a left-hand turn starts before you even get behind the wheel. It starts with a thorough pre-trip inspection. Your bus needs to be working correctly. As always, if there's a problem, report it immediately. Make sure your mirrors are properly adjusted. You're going to rely on your mirrors while you're driving, so be sure they are set correctly before you drive. Pre-trip inspection and proper mirror adjustment are covered in detail in another program. Before you take a bus out on the road, especially if it's a bus you don't normally drive, you'll need to know where its turning points are. So let's talk about this for a few minutes. Turning points are specific places on your bus that you use to line up a proper left or right turn. Turning points are different on different vehicles. They are also different on similar vehicles if they have different wheel stop adjustments. One of the safest ways to locate the turning points for the vehicle you're driving is to set up safety cones, like we've done here, to simulate a two-lane street. These cones represent the four curbs of the intersection, while these sets of cones represent the center line. To find the left turning point on your bus, use the following procedure. For purposes of this video, we will use a transit bus, but the principles will apply to other types of buses as well.
first, center the vehicle in your lane. Pull into the intersection until the front bumper, the turning point, is lined up with the center line of the road you are turning onto. Turn the steering wheel hard left and drive partially through the turn. Stop the bus and look where the rear tires are in relationship to the center line. If the wheels will hit the center line of the road you're turning onto, or if the wheels are less than six inches from the center line, go back to the starting point and try again. Move the turning point back about a foot and try again. The goal is for the rear tires to be about 12 inches inside the center line of the road you're turning onto. Turning points are very important. Used correctly, they will help you protect yourself and your passengers by preventing collisions that result from left turns that are either too wide or too shallow. Stop the tape now and discuss turning points for a left-hand turn. Then, when you get to your bus, see how quickly you can locate its turning point. Whenever you turn, you have to be conscious of your bus's tail swing. Tail swing occurs when a bus pivots on its rear wheels. On large vehicles like school or transit buses, when the front end moves in one direction, the rear end moves in the opposite direction. Tail swing is normally about 12 to 18 inches, but in some buses it can be as much as 3 feet. Accidents can occur if a bus driver does not pay enough attention to tail swing and turns without taking into account what might be right next to the right side of the bus. To minimize the chances of a tail swing accident, follow these steps. 1. Position your vehicle so that it is centered in the left-hand lane. Proper lane positioning in and of itself will eliminate most tail swing accidents. 2. Check the left and right mirrors before you turn. Then make your turn slowly and smoothly. 3. While you are turning, check the right mirror again to be sure your bus's tail swing does not hit a car on your right. Stop the tape now and discuss tail swing. Let's take a minute and talk about the blind spots on your bus. All vehicles have certain areas that are difficult or even impossible for the driver to see into. These are called blind spots. Be sure you know where the blind spots on your bus are. This diagram shows the blind spots on a transit bus. This one shows the blind spots of a paratransit bus. And this one shows you the blind spots on a school bus. Properly adjusted mirrors will help you see into most of the blind spots on your bus. However, the mirrors themselves can create new blind spots. Let me show you. This person is standing in one of the blind spots created by this bus's mirrors. As long as he stands there, the driver cannot see him. As you can see from this angle, the driver's face, and therefore his vision, is blocked by the mirror in front of him. So how do you correct this problem? The answer is rock your body, as this driver is demonstrating. Rocking your body is simply leaning back and forth so that you can see around your mirrors and into the blind spot. Accidents can occur when a vehicle or a pedestrian moves into one of your blind spots during a left turn. Be aware of your bus's blind spots. Always use your mirrors to see as much area as possible and rock your body to see around your mirrors. Stop the tape now and discuss blind spots and rocking.
as you have seen so far, there's a lot more to making a left turn than most people think. Seems like it would be easier to eliminate them altogether. Of course, that can never happen. You do have to make left-hand turns, several each day. So how should you do it? The short answer is safely. The long answer is first. Be sure your bus is centered in the lane. If there are multiple lanes, make sure you are centered in the leftmost lane. Put on your turn signal at least 100 feet before the intersection. Check the left mirror, then the right, and back to the left again. Do this as you approach the intersection and again before you pull into the intersection. Be sure you have enough side clearance to your right to compensate for any tail swing. Cover your brakes as you approach and be prepared to stop for anything. Always expect the unexpected. Be sure to watch for pedestrians, both on your street and on the street you're turning onto. Remember that in a regulated intersection, pedestrians on the street you're turning onto are using the same green light you are and have the right of way. Rock your body to see around your mirrors for pedestrians who may be walking in the crosswalk. These people can get lost behind your mirror if they are walking at the same speed your mirror is moving. When you're sure it is safe to proceed, pull into the intersection until your turning point is lined up with the center line of the road you're turning onto. Make the turn slowly enough so you can stop if anything or anybody darts in front of you, but fast enough to clear the intersection. Always expect the unexpected. Stop the tape now and discuss the different principles that apply to left turns. If you have any ideas based on your own experiences, speak up and let the others learn from you. The one constant in any turn, right or left, is the steering wheel. And believe it or not, the technique you use for steering a school bus is different than the technique used on a transit or a paratransit bus. Transit and paratransit buses use the hand-over-hand -hand technique. School bus drivers should use the push-pull technique. And just so there's no confusion, let's take a look at each. The hand-over-hand -hand method of turning uses your whole body to turn the steering wheel instead of making your arms do all the work. Start the turn with your hands at 9 and 3 o'clock. Then lean forward and grasp the wheel at 11 o'clock with your left hand. Lean back and pull till your hand is at 7 o'clock. Lean forward and take the wheel at 11 again with your right hand. Lean and pull to 7 and you're ready for the left at 11. Repeat the process hand over hand until your front wheels are at the correct angle for your turn. Hold the wheel at 9 and 3 again, letting it slide back through your palms as the bus straightens. If it doesn't straighten up through the motion of the bus, turn the wheel hand over hand back to the normal position. For school bus drivers, the push-pull method allows you to regulate both the speed and the degree of the turn in a more methodical manner. To turn left, start with your hands at 9 and 3 o'clock. Push your right hand up to 12 o'clock while your left hand pulls downward. Once your right hand reaches 12, place the left hand back at 9 and the right hand back at 3. Keep your thumbs up and make sure one hand is always gripping the wheel. Continue this procedure until the turn is complete and do not allow the wheel to slide back into place. Reverse the push-pull until the wheel is straight again. To make a right turn, simply reverse the motion. Put your left hand up to 12 while the right hand pulls down and so on. In just a moment, we're going to look at three accidents, 
after each one, you'll be asked what the driver should have done to prevent the accident. But for now, stop the tape and discuss the turning method used at your location. Now let's take a look at those accidents we've been talking about. After you watch each accident, we'll give you a chance to stop the tape and discuss what could have been done to prevent it from occurring. It's Friday afternoon. The driver is on his way to his last stops, then home. He's looking forward to the upcoming weekend. He stops at the intersection, just like he does every day, waits for it to clear, and leisurely goes into the turn. Still planning the weekend, he drifts wide past his turning point and clips the left rear corner of a car parked against the curb. Stop the tape now and discuss what the bus driver could have done to prevent the accident. The driver should have kept his mind on his driving and should have used his turning points. Turning points are very important. It helps uh, line up the bus to make safe turns and if you don't use your turning points you won't have a reference and you'll get into trouble just like the driver did. This bus driver approaches the intersection smoothly in the leftmost lane. He checks his left mirror then his right all clear. He waits for the light to change, makes sure there are no pedestrians in the street he's turning onto, and pulls out into the intersection. The tail swings sideswiping a car that's just pulled up on his right. Stop the tape now and discuss what the bus driver could have done to prevent this accident. come to the intersection, I get into the left lane, uh, not too far to the right or left. I want to center myself in that lane. And then I want to check my mirrors. The best way to check my mirrors is to uh, use body, my body, to work right or left into my mirrors. That way I can get a better view of, of vehicles on my right or in the intersection. And third, I will watch for tail swings at least 18 inches or more as I make the turn, the left turn in the intersection. This driver is getting ready to turn. While he's waiting for the light, he checks his mirrors and looks left, right, and left again. He rocks his body to see around his mirrors. Everything's okay. The light changes. He pulls out slightly and waits for oncoming traffic to clear the intersection. At the same time, a man comes out of a corner business and starts to cross the street. Traffic clears and the driver finishes his turn, hitting the man crossing the street. Stop the tape now and discuss what the bus driver could have done to prevent this accident. Well, you always have to um, expect the unexpected. Um, you have to always be aware of what's going on around you. You want to use your mirrors and um, you want to make sure that you're moving in your seat to be aware of what's going on around you. And you want to proceed through the left-hand turn with caution so you'll be able to stop in time in case anything happens. Absolutely right. Remember, Left-hand turns are dangerous if you take them for granted. Don't. Keep these important principles in mind. Keep your bus centered in the lane. For multiple lanes, use the leftmost lane. Put on your turn signal at least 100 feet before the turn. Check your mirrors as you approach the intersection and again before you pull into the intersection. Be sure you have enough side clearance to compensate for tail swing. Cover your brake as you approach and take the turn slowly enough to stop for anything 
but quickly enough to clear the intersection. And always expect the unexpected. Be aware of what's around you. Keep an eye on cars that could come from the left or right or from head on. Watch for pedestrians both on your street and on the street you're turning onto. Rock your body to see around your mirrors. Line up your turning points and use the correct turning method for the bus you are driving. Thank you for your attention to this important program. Your commitment to safety is important to Laidlaw. Thank you.